My fellow Americans, there are a few things I want to discuss and relate to you today in regards to our State of the Union, our political state, and our place in this world. As you may or may not know, my name is Cody Robert Judy, and I am a candidate for U.S. President and have been during the election cycles of 2008 and 2012. In 2008 I ran as a write-in and in 2012 and 2016 I've been a marginalized and disenfranchised presidential candidate in the Democratic Party. One who has not been taken seriously or given uh, due diligence uh, in the early parts of the race by mainstream media. Uh, one who did not receive fair or equal access to the data systems and roles of my political party. You may recall when Senator Bernie Sanders was cut off uh, and sued the Democratic Party because they unplugged him. Well, in a nutshell, they did not even allow me or show me a fair and equal chance of even forwarding emails to the members of the Democratic Party for a choice of which I was a candidate of recognized by the Federal Election Commission or FEC. I would like to discuss very briefly some of the reasons the leaders of the Democratic Party may have felt to marginalize me or disenfranchise me as a candidate or choice for the members. If you consider all the reasons into one word, that word would be judgment. Our interest together today should be deciding whether that was good or righteous judgment or poor, bad or unrighteous judgment. The book I have written called Taking a Stand, the Conservative Independent Voice relates that it has been poor or bad judgment under the standards or principles of the United States Constitution for and by which our republic stands. Like Hillary Clinton's health, speeches for sale, and emails on her private server while conducting Secretary of State business, I have been covered up and marginalized. Although my actions have been very public, they have not been very popular. And that only becomes a problem for you if my judgment actually was correct under the law. As a candidate for president, how many of you feel the laws and rules of the race should be fair and equal? As Americans, how many of you feel the standard you should be judged by should be American standard. As voters in the United States, how many of you are electing with your vote a president of the United States or a president of the world? In a consortium of real facts in answering these questions at a base or foundational way, we can summarize the problems of the Democratic Party as being too big for its britches. It is not the world we serve first, it's Americans. <clears throat> Under the law, we as Americans reserve only two offices where any foreign allegiance by birth, place, or by inherited birthright by parent is prohibited. Those offices are president and vice president for which we find a qualification of time we call natural born citizen defined without a doubt by the U.S. Supreme Court in Minor v. Happersett as those born in the country to citizen parents. Many of the Democratic Party leaders don't like me because I say Barack Obama is not qualified under a fair and equal standard of the Constitution for the office of the President in the United States of America. To be fair and equal, many of the Republican leaders don't like me because I took a stand and said Senator John McCain was also unqualified for this particular office based on his being a native of Panama by his birth there and not in the United States or one of the states of the Union. I am uniquely the only candidate for president in the United States with a federal court with federal court cases seeking justice under the law in a fair and equal application of the law. In those two offices of president and vice president, citizen was agreed as the qualification only to those at the time of the adoption of the Constitution, held in high esteem as distinguished citizens, citizen patriots of the American Revolution. 
whereupon the United States Constitution framed our government and our court justice system in three branches and the check and balance of authority given to the responsibility and accountability by we the people in the interest of a more perfect union. I do not apologize for taking a stand for the fair and equal application of the law. I do not apologize for the allegiance of time required by two generations. And I do not apologize for understanding I am American with an unfractured allegiance for a nation with defined borders for which this standard of law applies. Now within my duties and responsibilities as a candidate for president came standing or the voice of objection to the violation of rules for which a multitude of my fellow countrymen were not heard based on their not being in the race as a candidate. Also came the platform of my campaigns. I called my Three Ropes Initiatives. The Three Ropes Initiatives came to me in a vision of what America needed to thrive, blossom, and produce great abundance for our work. To swing out of harm's way and to get back on track. That vision has been my platform because under scrutiny it made sense. And they are in my book, Taking a Stand, The Conservative Independent Voice, published in 2008. Those three ropes include, one, securing the borders, for no nation is a nation without a secure area for its laws or application of the law. America's Natural Resource Initiative, proposed as a liberator of debt and a source of securing entitlements and taking care of our people by trade and tariff. And three, America's strong defense initiative meant not only to secure our country, but to honor, respect, and pay for the defense of America used by other countries with a 35% tax or gratuity of war or police where the defenses have been used like they were free. You can Google Cody Robert Judy Three Ropes Initiative and by the way, these were not popular in the Republican Party. In fact, I recall Senator John McCain with the tide turning against him in the Senate race, I think it was 2012, finally saying, okay, we'll build a fence. In America, we have seen the yoke of debt now at near $20 trillion placed upon our future generations as an inheritance. The gate of Glass-Steagall was released by President Bill Clinton at the end of his term that was like releasing the Kraken upon Olympus. President Bush, W, created a preemptive war strategy that violated previous standards of defense, creating six to eight trillion dollars of debt. And Obama has presided over a quote-unquote recovery financed by another 10 trillion. I don't know how you can finance a recovery and call it a recovery. That has been exasperated by the interest of corporate America's new employment of slavery found abroad and their protections of it through funding campaigns for politicians who would not place a tariff on their imported product. That is why domestic producing factories are building out of America, not including the White House domestic production of identity documents for Obama. I am convinced that when any political party loses its anchor to the foundation of principles, that party will drift away from the favor of Americans. That, produce, that process is a humbling process, and wake-up call, and one, of the Dem and one the Democratic Party is going through now. I have been called a birther, and I was before. Donald J. Trump, who is now out of 17 and hundreds of millions of dollars the GOP nominee, my platform, Three Ropes Initiative, was ridiculed before Donald J. Trump and 17 and hundreds of millions of dollars were defeated, making him the GOP nominee. 
The bottom line is I, as a Democrat candidate, offered what has become popular now. And when Hillary Clinton is defeated, Democrats will have to say we refused our best and brightest, our strong and sound, and drifted away from these anchors at every level, judicial, legislative, and executive branches of government. We abandoned the American people. We called, we labeled Americans racist rather than exceptional. That was stupid, stupid, stupid. And we are not popular anymore. To Donald J. Trump for this lesson to the Democratic Party, I salute you and thank you for your service. Apparently, the Democratic Party no longer values choice enough to advocate it while staying anchored to the foundational principles and for that they may lose the rights of women to not be incarcerated during a nine-month pregnancy. Apparently, the Democratic Party no longer values equal privilege of citizen enough to advocate it while staying anchored to the foundational principles and for that they may lose the rights of same-sex marriage. Apparently, the Democratic Party no longer values equal respect for inherited citizenship enough to advocate it while staying anchored to the foundation principles and for that may lose women's suffrage. In a landslide victory of Donald J. Trump, the elite of the Democratic Party and the lapdog media sycophants are going to see what a small minority they really are and how all the money today cannot stand against the blood of yesterday. I'm Cody Robert Judy, signing out. Good day.